Hi, I'm Jonathan Knight, and this is B-Movie Band. Is the movie I'm going to talk about today? Well, I got a special one to talk about today. I say that all the time, but this is truly a special one. This is going to be my first non-SOV-related review, um, probably since towards the beginning of the year. And the, re the main reason I'm doing it is I have been wanting to do one, but um, if you don't know, I might have discussed it in the past, but the laptop I was using to do a shit ton of my reviews... Um, it's a really ancient one. I've been using it since 2018. It could only go up to Windows XP. I've had a lot of problems, um, you know, audio-wise. And then, like, you know, there's certain programs I couldn't download because it wouldn't take Windows XP. YouTube made me use YouTube Studio, and my computer didn't want to have any of it. So I've had to really, really push really hard just to get my reviews out. But I got a new laptop yesterday um, for early Christmas presents, so wanting to do a test review but it's a movie i've been wanting to talk about i've been waiting for this blu-ray to come out i didn't get it until now because the friday 13th box set and everything else so it's been crazy but um for the first time in a long time i'm picking something out my trusty trash can what could it be oh sweet jesus that's some cheddar the one and only the legendary Jose Larez's 1987 super hot natural horror film, Rest in Pieces. Or you'll probably know it better from its cover art. Right. Right here. I'm trying to get it good. I saw that art a million times. I never rented the movie. I don't understand why. But I did watch the movie um, about a decade ago, a VHS rip of it. So I did watch it. And I remember liking it pretty much. And then, you know, I was waiting for... After Edge of the Axe and Deadly Manor, the other two, um, let me back up a little bit. If you don't know who Jose Larraz is, um, back in the 70s, you mainly know him from his 70s output of, like, the movie Vampires and Whirlpool. He did a whole bunch of Spanish horror movies back in the 70s. But in the last part of his career, he did three U.S. set horror movies. The first being Breast of Pieces, second was Edge of the Axe, and the third and final was um, Deadly Manor. And I've seen, like, Edge of the Axe a million times. I love Dead, um, uh, Edge of the Axe. Sorry, I burped. I really apologize for that. Uh, but Rest in Pieces um, was one that, like I said, I saw, like, a million times as a kid as on the VHS shelf, and I never rented it. But And I, I, enjoy, I remember enjoying it when I saw the VHS rip. But before I get into what I felt about the movie, or how I felt about the movie, what I felt, how I felt about the movie, what is Rest in Pieces about? Well, it's about a woman named Helen Hewitt who has inherited her recently deceased aunt's giant country villa. After arriving at their new home, her and her husband, Bob, immediately feel a sense of unease and hostility from the estate staff and tenants, all of whom do their best to make the young couple feel unwelcomed. As strange and increasingly sinister events begin to take place around her, Helen becomes determined to uncover the truth about the going on. It slowly begins to unearth the horrifying unspeakable evil occurring at the mysterious mansion. Sounds good, right? Now, before I rewatched this movie, I kind of looked up. I was curious what like the internet felt about it. I don't know why, but all the reviews pre the Blu-ray coming out absolutely hated this movie. They trashed it. But the one thing, as I noticed, is people weren't sure if these were ghosts in the movie or zombies. And I even have a zombie movie book that mentions the movie, and they were like, "Oh, they're zombies." In my opinion, they are not zombies. They are ghostly beings of sorts that are some part of some kind of weird suicide suicide cult but let me rewind a little bit how did i feel about the movie rewatching on blu-ray i will say is i actually enjoyed it a lot more than i did when i watched the vhs i remember enjoying it enough on the vhs rip i really enjoyed it a lot more now i'm not going to say there's no problems with this movie i think there's some pacing issues in the first act of the movie maybe first two acts but when there's this one scene happens as soon as that scene happens the movie for me takes off i was kind of engaged for the rest of the movie um as for the acting the lead actress whose name is lauren jean vale i'm not gonna be i'm not i'm gonna be perfectly honest she is fucking terrible in this movie she is awful but she is absolutely gorgeous and she gets naked a whole bunch of times throughout the movie she's actually a swimsuit model turned actor so it makes sense why her acting's not good but it makes sense why jose the rash cast in the movie because she's incredibly photogenic and i couldn't take my eyes off her she's just this one she's absolutely gorgeous um the actor who plays her husband scott thompson baker i actually thought he was pretty decent he uh, is mostly a soap opera actor this was the first movie he did 
He, um, you know, afterwards worked in soap operas and several other TV programs. He's actually pretty good. And the ghostly tenants, most of them are actually pretty decent. Um, I thought the, um, what's his name, the, the pastor one, um, pastor ghost, he was really creepy. And there's also an appearance by Jack Taylor. If you don't know who Jack Taylor is, he was, he was in a shit ton of Spanish horror movies. Most people know him from, um, pieces he played the professor. Um, he's pretty good. He's probably my favorite. Uh, he probably has my favorite moment in the movie, which I'll get to in a minute, which I'll get into right now. I don't know why I said a minute. Um, my, where the movie really takes off for me is there's a sequence in the movie where the ghostly tenants are, um, ha, um, they had, they hired these musicians to come to the villa and perform music. And when the music, when they're done, they begin to murder off the musicians like, like crazy. It becomes like an orgy of violence. And, um, Jose Larez did something very similar in Edge of the Axe where, um, when someone gets hit with a weapon, he doesn't cut away to like a fake arm or something. He actually shows it all in one shot. Like, like that in Edge of the Axe, there's an axe that hits someone's arm and their blood. And he does that in this movie while people are getting their throats cut, getting stabbed. He does it all without cutting away to like a, a obvious special effects shot. And I actually thought that was super effective. It's not super gory. There is gore. But it's not super gory, but it's really effective. And in fact, I'm not the only one that thinks that because it says right here that the movie won the 1987 Go Award nomination for gore effects. Actually, it doesn't say it won. It was nominated, but still, it was nominated. Whatever that award is. Um, I thought that scene was super effective. Once that scene happened, I was like engaged with the rest of the movie. I was interested in what was going on. Um, my favorite moment is when Jack Taylor stabbed. He has a cane. I believe he's blind. And he has a cane and he... The knife pops out and he stabs somebody with it. Um, I thought that was probably, that was really cool. The movie has enough gore to satisfy me. Might not have enough to satisfy, like, the extreme gore hounds, but it satisfied me. If you've seen Edge of the Axe, it's pretty much as gory as that movie. Um, but once that happened, I was engaged throughout of it. I thought there was, um, the way the story went, there were some things I was confused about, you know, exactly what was happening, but basically, the tenants are some kind of suicide cult that want to, you know, the the niece to be the next victim of it, you know, whatever, you know, become the next ghostly tenant of the house. Um, and I thought that was pretty interesting how that was kind of developed and you kind of get um, the husband trying to, you know, find where the inheritance money is. Supposedly there's money hidden somewhere. The niece is trying to find out exactly what's going on with all these strange people in the house. I thought it was fairly interesting, especially when it gets towards the third act of the movie when all things go crazy. There's a scene where... Um, involving the husband, I don't want to quite spoil this, um, but something happens involving his character that is shown happening one way, and then later you see how it really happened. And it's actually very clever, in my opinion, the way they did that. And the finale is just a shit ton of fun. There's some decapitated heads. It's just, it's a, it's a fun little finale. It does end on a predictable note, but it's a satisfyingly predictable note, and you can see it coming a mile away, but it's all part of the fun. And overall, I thought this was a fun but cheesy 80s supernatural horror movie. And if you've seen his other movies, um, I, can't, I actually have never seen his 70s um, output, so I have no idea. From what I understand, they are very different from the, these the about three movies I discussed. But um, I think compared to, I think Edge of the Axe is still the best one of the three, but this one's a close second. Um, and, if, and if you're into cheesy 80s horror movies, then you definitely have to track this down. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. If you don't, I am sorry. You know, it's it's. I will say it does have an offbeat feel to it. You can tell it was a foreign director trying to make it American. It was actually filmed in Spain, but set in the U.S. And it does have this offbeat feel to it. But I thought I found that offbeat feel, uh, offbeat feel, to be kind of um, charming. So it worked for me, and I thought it was a fun movie. Um, as for extras, um, it was restored in 4K from the 35 original negative. It looks beautiful. It looks gorgeous. Vinegar Syndrome always knocks it out of the park for me, picture quality wise. Um, and this is one of their better. This is one of their best transfers, in my opinion. I'm gonna fucking clear. Um, there's a piece by piece, an interview with Scott Thompson Baker. He played the husband in the movie. He um, talks about his career, how he was hired in the movie. You know, to talk about the director. Um, his feelings about the movie. He rewatched it recently and he enjoyed it. It's a really good interview with him. And it's, it's good that he actually is proud of the movie now. There's an audio commentary with um, film historians and authors Sam Deegan and Kate Ellinger. Ellinger, sorry if I mispronounced your names. Um, the commentary track is 
highly informative and really entertaining. Um, they talk about the background of the movie, the background of the directors, the actors in the movie. They tell a really funny story about the lead actress. Um, it's a really great commentary track. Um, they also did one for Deadly Manor, which was pretty entertaining as well. And I know Sam Deegan did one for Nightmare Beach and Zombie 5 Killing Birds, the ones I've listened to. And those are really great checks, especially the Zombie 5 one. Um, but that's it. There's no trailer or anything, but still, um, the commentary truck would have been, a commentary truck, commentary track would have been enough for me. I thought it was an entertaining track. But yeah, like I said, if you like cheesy 80s supernatural horror, then absolutely check this out. And if you have seen it, what do you think about it? Let me know down below. Um... I will have more SOV-related reviews um, coming next week. I got two to do by the 13th, and then I got one for January. And then in between all that, I'm thinking about maybe doing some a couple more of these non-SOV-related ones. Of what, I have no idea. But I will figure out something. I might do another SO, or an SOV, another Vinegar Syndrome title. So, we'll see. Um, if you like my channel, give me a thumbs up, hit the bell, and comment below. What is your favorite Spanish horror movie? Mine is either the second Blind Dead movie or Pieces. Pieces is incredible. If you have not seen Pieces, then go out right now and watch it. It's, it's incredible. But um, I'm, that's all for now. I'm Jonathan Ainsley, B-Movie Madness. Thanks for watching.